guys, it is Drew here from Lone Fox, and I am so excited for today's video. I am actually going to be DIYing things that you guys DM'd me, which is so different. I've never done this before. Typically, I always think of the DIYs ideas myself, but I wanted to take it upon myself to just create some things that you guys really wanted to see. James, I can't wait to have a um, one of your freakouts. It'll be really good. Oh my! We love a siren. Over my Instagram story, I asked you guys what you wanted to see and I got a lot of requests. So if you're not already following my Instagram account, it is Lone Fox Home, it's brand new. Lots of good and fresh things posted over there, home decor and DIY based. But I'm gonna take some of those projects that you guys sent me and I picked some that I really wanna recreate and I'm going to try and attempt to recreate them today. If you're not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel for your daily dose of DIY and become part of the Lone Fox family. And yeah, I think we should just get into this video. So the first project I'm creating is actually from someone that sent it in called I'm the Cap Boy. And you probably can't see it on the screen. I'll put it on the screen for you. It is like a floral hanging wall mobile ceiling situation type of thing. And I wanted to do this because, first of all, I thought it was really pretty. It's also super affordable. And I instantly saw exactly how I was going to do it. Like, when I saw the photo, I was like, oh, this is like... I'm just gonna know how to do this already. Like I already know. Okay, so the supplies that I'm using to create this was first this little wire ring. I got this at Joann's Fabrics. I purchased all of these fake flowers at Michael's. They were 50% off, so I got a really good deal on them. And then I'm also using a hot glue gun, which is right over here, and a bit of white string. So from what I can see in this photo, it looks like the underside or the most inside layer has like strips of white, and then it kind of goes into a little bit of pink and then like a purple tone on the outside. So I'm starting off by just pulling off these white flowers. I'm gonna pull them directly off and next what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue them to a white piece of string you could tie them of course but I decided that I kind of wanted to hot glue it and it looks like the longest strand is maybe about I would say like 18 inches okay so I cut all nine strands and now I'm gonna start gluing on the flowers and it kind of looks like there's maybe like mm, 10 flowers per strand which is going to take quite a while well not that long you know it's just like a bit tedious and I think I'm just gonna start by taking a flower putting a little bit of glue on the flower and then sticking it to the bottom of the string so we have one flower dangling on here but what we're going to do is like add more flowers up and then it's going to be the most inside layer and then we're gonna like layer flowers outwards as we go This would also be a really great idea if you're doing it for like the holiday time. So you could do like leaves instead for the fall time. Alrighty, so we have all nine strands completely done. And then what I'm gonna do is grab that ring thing down here. Ooh, I forgot a step actually. I'm supposed to paint this ring gold. I'll be using, like, utilizing my Michaels bag as like a nice background for painting. This gold paint that I'm using, I found at the craft store. It's called Radiant Gold Craft Smart Paint. And use a paintbrush just to go over. Oh yeah, this will be good. I might have to do like two coats, but that'll be fine. I'm just gonna quickly go over this entire thing. Normally I would spray paint this because it's a lot quicker, but I was in James's apartment. I didn't really want to spray paint in here. So I decided to just bring actual paint. So I added a light brush of gold over the top of that and it looks so cool. I like how you can see the green underneath it a little bit and I'm gonna flip it over and do the back side as well. I got these little pink flowers as well, which I'm going to be using on um, the same way that I did with the white ones, but instead of having the string be like this long, I'm gonna have it be like a little bit shorter. That way when I put them and glue them on, it kind of like cascades up a little bit. So I created all the pink ones and I think I'm gonna add a couple of these like little tiny yellow flowers in between there just to get it or make it look a little bit more full. So I'm gonna glue some of those on as well. I'm also gonna cut up some of these purple flowers, um, but I'm actually gonna leave them in the clusters because I think they look pretty like that. All right, so the ring is completely dry now and it looks like it has a nice golden brushed effect. A little bit vintage and rustic, which is what I wanted to go for because I don't want it to be so perfect because these flowers are kind of perfect and I feel like the sample here kind of looks a little bit more rustic. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna hang this because I have to hold it and glue it and stick it at the same time. But basically, I'm going to be attaching the white flowers here on the most inner side, the pink and yellow flowers probably um, on the the second to the outside one and then I'm gonna be attaching the purple ones on the outer side and then varying it all around cascading it up at different lengths but it's gonna be like this on there and it's gonna be hard for me to show this but I will figure it out Thank you. 
actually just walked away to like put this off to the side and I realized that if you tilt this like this, it would look so pretty hanging on the wall. I think I even like it more like this. All right, so moving into the second project, I got a DM from Anna Papacosta, I believe that's how you pronounce her name, and she sent these super adorable little like cactus jewelry holders, and I love the way that they look. They probably are from like Etsy or a website or something, and I wanted to recreate them. So I got a little bit of clay. I got this pack of Sculpey one pound clay at the craft store, and then I also got some really pretty um, kind of like mint toned sage green paints, some Mod Podge to lock it all in at the end, some gold paint to add a little bit of gold on there. This is a big chunk of clay. Mm. I always wanted to smell that. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by just breaking off a large chunk of this clay. Probably about this much is good for one of them. And I'm just gonna start warming it up because I want it to become as malleable as possible. Okay, so it kind of looks like the base is a bit wider and it kind of goes up into almost like a little ring holder itself. So I'm going to cut off uh, a chunk that I think that will be good for that. And I'm just gonna start rolling it. It has two little arms that kind of come out on both sides, so I'm going to randomly pull off enough. And you're just gonna want these to be kind of like a little bit skinnier because you're going to want your rings to fit over these portions. And then maybe clip off however much I do not want. Here we go. I think that's pretty good. Looks kind of like a horn of some sort. I'm gonna put it on. I'm just gonna use my finger to really mold that on there. Okay, we have one arm of our cactus good, and I'm gonna do the other one now. I could probably just use these little scraps I have to create that. I'm gonna put this one's arm just like a little bit down more, and then just kind of, again, melt it together. Okay, this is looking pretty good so far, actually. I'm literally going to pour a tiny bit of it. I'm just gonna pour it right on the table. Sorry, James. You're just gonna be able to kind of work with it a little bit more, almost like a paint. It kind of feels like paint, like a very thick paint, but you can smooth it out. It's gonna get rid of all your creases and it's just gonna make it much more seamless looking. All right, so it's now completely smooth and I'm gonna go bake this and then paint it and then seal it and then put my jewelry on it. So yeah, I'll be back in probably four seconds when it's done baking. So I'm back, I baked my little object. It is nice and hard and ready to go. Could you imagine if it broke like right there? And just give this like a good coating of this paint and it's bright minty color. It's actually a little, it's a little bit too on the turquoise side. I'm gonna mix in a tiny bit of sage green from Craft Smart, which is like the same exact brand. There we go. I just wanted it to be a little bit more like gray toned and not super like cool. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry, and then when I come back, we're gonna add a little bit of gold accent and then seal it all with Mod Podge. The gold is gonna be done with that radiant gold paint that I was using earlier, and just like a tiny little brush that has a point on it, and I'm going to be applying a little bit of gold onto here. So it almost looks like the gold is applied on in like very like slight brush strokes, so that is exactly what I'm doing, and it looks so pretty, I'm scared. Oh my gosh, this looks so good, I'm obsessed. Okay, so I finished adding the gold and it looks amazing. I'm obsessed. It looks almost exactly like the photo. I'm actually going to let it dry. I'm gonna go to the store tomorrow and get some shiny Mod Podge because I actually want it to have like a very like thick, shiny glaze over the top of it. So it looks like a ceramic that you find at like anthropology or something. Okay, so moving into the third and final DIY in this video, which I think this might actually be my favorite one. I just really like it and I'm excited to put it in my room. It is this DIY wire letter wall art. I think I'm also just going to recreate the Be Kind just so I can like recreate it like exactly how it is. But the products that I'm using in this are a wire accent aluminum foil wire. And this is like very key, I think, because aluminum is super, super easy to bend. Like you can see how thick this wire is and it just like bends very easily. So get an aluminum wire for the base and then I'm using a little bit of floral wire that is just like a very thin one that I'm going to wrap around all of the joints. So I think I'm gonna start off with the B and I'm going to actually cut the ending off here. Oh, and it cuts with scissors. Probably not good, but I'm still gonna cut with scissors. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm just going to take the wire and just bend it into the shape of a letter B. And it's like 
honestly like kind of easy. Okay, I have something that looks somewhat like a letter B, but of course at the same time, like it looks like this, like it's not even connected in any ways, which is what I'm going to be using the smaller wire for. Um, I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to use this to kind of connect all of the joint areas. I'm gonna use a really thin wire here to really wrap it a lot of times and make sure that the letter is very, very secure and you can wrap it in all the directions. Like you might even wanna go around the center section here. I'm gonna also try to make it the same exact length as the E, as the B. I finished both the top letters. This took me like literally three minutes to create. I'm obsessed with the way this looks as well. They cut one piece that's gonna start off the letter K and then they did all the rest of the cursive from there. Okay guys, and that is the finishing of this project. So we have the B and we have the kind. It looks literally exactly like the one on Pinterest. Like I'm looking at it right now on my phone if you're wondering what I'm staring at. All right guys, so that was everything in today's video. I hope that you enjoyed the three projects that we created. You can definitely personalize them to make them fit your own personal aesthetic or however you wanna do it. But those are just three new ideas that you guys DM'd me and then I created. So definitely subscribe to my channel for more Lone Fox DIY projects. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. I can totally do another one of these. And feel free to DM me your projects whenever you want. My Instagram is Lone Fox Home. And my personal Instagram is I'm Drew Scott if you wanna see my outfits and you wanna see just more of me, you know. Daily Dose of Drew, follow I'm Drew Scott. Okay, I'm done babbling on. Um, I will catch you next one and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Bye.